understanding how the SQL identity value works is important to understanding when, when not to use it. So in this video, we're going to look at how to set up the auto incrementing value on a SQL column, how it works, when to use it, and what to do when it skips numbers. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to answer the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. All right, so here I have open a table that I had created previously, just we had something to work with. And this ID column is the one that has an auto incrementing value. And you even notice it has one, two, then 1002. And you may say, whoa, that's a big skip. We're gonna talk about that later in this video. Again, it's only 10 minutes, we'll get to it pretty quick. But we're gonna talk about what to do when this happens and, and how to deal with it, okay? So, but that's when auto incrementing value is. If I were to put something else, Jane Doe, I don't fill in, notice the identity column, I'll leave it blank. And we now have 1003. So it keeps going in the next number available. So how does that work? How do we set it up and so on? Well, here is a, a simple definition or a start of a definition for a table. And with this table, we can say, okay, let's create an ID column. Let's create a first name and last name. However, this will not create an auto incrementing value for the ID. It is marked as a primary key. Notice down here, it says primary key. So if I were to say uh, first name and Varchar, and last name, and Varchar, and I were to, let's call this table um, demo person, or demo people, and I were to update this and, and run that. This is in Visual Studio um, because it allows me to do some quick stuff with it. But now that I have this done, so if I were to go over here and refresh my table list, okay, so, in my database, demo DB tables, um, and I go down to demo people, I can say view data, and we can start entering data, right? So if I were to say Tim and Corey leaving ID null, it says, no, I can't do that because it does not allow nulls, insert fail. If you ever get an error message, make sure you read it. And if you read, cannot insert the value null into column ID, you've made this mistake, okay? So what is the mistake? Well, the mistake is that we never marked this as an identity column. It's a primary key that's different, but it's not an identity column. So what's the difference? Well, a primary key, what this does is, and by the way, I have a full course on this, an Accelerate course that's designed to get you up to speed in SQL in a weekend. That would be the next logical step if you wanna keep going. But a primary key, what it does is it says, hey, this is the, the unique value that we're going to order all the records by, okay? So when SQL stores your data, it stores it on disk. And what it does is it stores it in order based upon the primary key. So when a new record comes in, it figures out where to put it in order on disk. Well, we haven't given it a value. There's no value here. And so therefore it says, hey, I can't store a null value. That's, that wouldn't be in order. So what do we do? We have to mark this as identity. What this does, this one keyword here, when you create the table, the other way of doing this is if you were to take this off, select the, the column, and then go to your properties, you can say identity specification and change the is identity to true. And that will also mark it as identity. This in SSMS, if you're modifying it, this is what you'll see is the is identity under the identity specification. So what this does is it sets an auto incrementing value on our ID column, meaning we don't have to change anything in order to get a new value to go in. It does it for us. And it's auto incrementing, means it gives a new value every time. Now the identity seed is one, it's defaults. The identity seed is one, which means it's gonna start at the number one. And the increment is one, meaning it's gonna count up by one. So one, two, three, four, you get the picture. Now, why is that valuable? Well, because these records are stored on disk in order, 
when you insert a new record, it goes to the end all the time. If you were to start by something else, let's say a GUID, well, a GUID has to fit in the list in order, meaning it has to be put in the middle somewhere. That's a little bit less efficient than this auto incrementing ID. It also, by having a number, when we say, hey, I want record 1002, that's pretty easy to remember. It's pretty easy to, to read and so on. If we have a GUID, well, that's what, 16 characters of, of letters and numbers. That's a little bit more complex to remember. So it allows for more easy human interaction as well. So there's a number of reasons why you might choose. I'm not saying you always choose. There's a, a lot of benefits to GUIDs as well, but this is one of the reasons why you might choose an auto incrementing value for your ID. Now, in this table, sorry, this table, I have that auto incrementing ID on. It's turned on, it auto increments, it auto increments by one. So what happened here between record two and the third record to cause this gap? This is one of the questions that comes up a lot. People ask me, well, how do I get that gap to go away? The answer is you don't, because you don't care about this number. You should not care about the value in your ID column. All you care about is that there is a unique value going in. So why is there a skip? Well, I had to force this to work, but what I did was this SQL is actually running on a Docker container. And I intentionally crashed the container. I did not stop it normally or gently. I intentionally crashed it. And in doing so, SQL said, I don't know if I was done writing my records. The way SQL works is when you say, insert this record, it's gonna put it into a temp location first and then put it in the right spot in the database. This is for efficiency. But if you crash a SQL database, there might be records still in that temp location. So when you restart the server, you're gonna to wanna to start inserting records right away, potentially. And so SQL says, hey, you know what? I need to have a buffer in order to make sure that they don't have any records in the temp because otherwise they might get the wrong number. They might get out of order compared to the new ones. So it reserves a thousand records, a thousand numbers for those values that might be in the temp location. Now we can insert them later. You'll see three, four, five, six, seven show up if there were any in the buffer. There wasn't, but in case there was, okay? So this is a, a safety feature of SQL and it's not something you want to turn off or have go away. It's there to protect you. But again, we don't really care what that number is. We don't need to have it be in uh, the next value all the time. We don't need to have one, two, three, four, we absolutely do not want to reuse identifiers. So if I were to delete, let's say John Smith, do not reuse that identifier somewhere else for a different record. That's, that's a huge no-no that causes major problems because if you have any kind of archiving, any kind of historical data, anything that also points to an identifier, now you don't know if it's the old record or the new record that you're pointing to. They should always be this column here, the identity, identity column, should always be unique and never reused. So this is fine. One, two, two, 1002, 1003. That's an absolutely fine order. Leave it alone. Don't worry about it. You'll most likely see us in a development environment because of the fact that you're more likely to turn off your SQL server than you would be in a production environment. And it's not just turning it off, it's turning it off abruptly. So. That's how identity works. That's when you might use it. Um, I prefer the auto incrementing value because of that efficiency going in, because of the ease of linking, because it's easier for me as a, a human to read it and so on. And no, you don't need to worry about that ID number being exceeded because it's in the billions, I believe it is. So unless you're gonna have billions of records, which is a whole different problem, it won't be a problem. All right. So that's identity. That's how to turn it on. That's how to use it. And that's when to use it as well. All right. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.